I'm Adam Blattenberg from Diesel World. Hi, this is Dan, owner of Dan's Diesel Performance. I'm Christian Roth of DD Diesel. I'm Braden Fleece, and you're listening to the Diesel Podcast. What is going on, Diesel Nation? We're excited to have you guys with us today on the Diesel Podcast. And I was recently looking at some of our, our stats, and it just blew my mind how much support you guys have given us over the years. So in 2020, we had 2.5 million downloads. And overall, since we started the podcast, a little over four and a half million I think it was 4.8 million and that's a testament to you guys and the tremendous support you've given us since the very first one that we did in January 2016 and throughout the years and all the amazing questions and the builds that you guys share with us and we wanted to thank you guys for that and then the support not just on podcast apps but also YouTube and Instagram and Facebook and you guys share so much cool stuff with us, and we get our inspiration from you guys. We wanted to thank you for that. It wouldn't be possible, and this podcast wouldn't even exist without you guys. Today, we've got Dan and Ty from Dan's Diesel Performance on the podcast, and we're going to talk drop-in turbos. I wanted to ask them about not just the Duramax turbos they have, but also drop-ins for Cummins and Power Strokes, and they've got some really cool things that they're they're working on getting ready to release, and I just wanted to catch up with them, see what they've been up to at the shop and what their plans are with some of the events that are going to be going on this year, and if they're going to be taking a, a special display motor like they did to UCC a couple years ago, which was really cool, so they're going to maybe give us a sneak peek at that. All right, let's get to the podcast with Dan and Ty and chatting about drop-in turbos. Dan and Ty, welcome back to the Diesel Podcast. We're here pretty early in 2021, and I know everyone's excited for, one, I think the snow and the Arctic weather to stop all over the country, and uh, get into race season and and uh, taking our trucks to the outdoors with towing and stuff like that. So I'm looking forward to a really interesting conversation about, well, really the big three and a ton of different parts for them. Yeah, cool. Uh, we're happy to be here. Yeah, excited. Awesome. Well, I wanted to kind of you know start, you know, over the last year, we've got a lot of new new diesel truck owners and people are thinking about getting a truck, whether it's a new one or or um, an older one. And I wanted to just have you guys tell us a little bit about, you know, yourselves, the company, where you guys are located and what you guys specialize in, in offering diesel truck owners. Okay. Yeah. We're uh, located in Chesney Park, Illinois. i uh, been in business for uh, over t- 12 years now, 13 years. Yeah. Sounds about right. Uh, you know, we work on the big three for Chevy, Dodge. We specialize in Chevy. Uh, we make a lot of parts in-house, turbochargers, injectors, CP3 pumps, uh, transmissions, uh, a lot of stuff, piping. So, uh, but uh, yeah, we do a lot of turbochargers, uh, specializing mainly in drop-ins. So a guy can just remove his factory turbocharger and drop our turbocharger in. That's how they call it, a drop-in and uh get better performance for you know towing or daily driving or just making more horsepower so yeah kind of just keeping the simplicity as much you can while at the same time wreaking the benefit from anything upgraded more power more efficient um things tend to get more complicated when guys are gearing towards uh, i want to start replacing stuff with better stuff and with the drop-in platform, I feel like you're you're kind of getting the best of both worlds. You're you're keeping, like I said, that simplicity there while also gaining a, a bunch of other benefits in you know more ways than you used to with having to switch other things out. That's one of the most common questions that that will come across is somebody who's looking at you know, it could be an LBZ or LB7 or LML or really any truck out there is is they pick one up and you know, they're thinking about the turbo, maybe the one that's on the truck is having some issues or they just want to start fresh. And the question comes up, well, should I get a kit where you're, you're basically changing the whole turbo, the piping, the downpipe, everything else, or a drop in. And you had mentioned the simplicity, but I wanted to ask you with a drop in turbo, what, what sort of benefits or customizations can you offer a customer? Like if somebody calls in and says, Hey, I just tow with this truck. I've got you know, stock injectors, maybe a tune on it. I just want it to tow a little bit better versus the guy who says, hey, I want a street truck. I'm not towing with this thing. Uh, I'm just going to go to the racetrack on the weekends. And other than that, I'm driving it to work, you know, five, six days a week. That That's probably the best part with the drop-ins is both those guys are good taken care of 
whichever way they wanted to go. The guy that has the stock injectors is just looking for a replacement with maybe a little bit of an upgrade would stick to the smaller sizing around that 64 mil range. Um, if he has plans in the future to go a little bit bigger, he can and go with our, our middle of the road charger, which is, I would probably say our most common, the 66. Um, while then with the 68 or even the 72 in some cases, those guys that it is a street truck, it's a play truck. It doesn't see the snow, the rain. It, it It's their toy. That's what those chargers are geared towards and really is something that we've been trying to stress to the customers. We get that all the time to where, you know, someone calls in, they want that 68, they heard it, they saw, they, they heard the whistle, they want the whistle or even the 72 and they don't have the knowledge behind what they're physically purchasing, purchasing or interested in. So um, we try to educate them best we can on what's going to fit their application, their needs, their wants, and that's going to give the truck overall its best drivability. Um, it's going to perform as efficient as it could. It's going to give that customer the best fit for what they need, essentially. That's one of the really cool things about your guys' website is um, when I was on there and I was looking at Duramax dropping turbos, is you guys have all the information right there, which is really helpful to see, okay, if, if this is a power level you're shooting for, this is what this turbo is designed to do. This is what supporting fuel modifications you may need, depending on which one that they want. And then how do you use it? You know, some of them are for daily driving, towing. Other ones are just, this is competition only. You know, that's that helps a lot. Yeah, a lot of people, well, they'll, they'll do is they'll want a, that's like a 68 millimeter, you know, get, get the biggest one for their truck. Uh, just because, oh, that's what they read online or, heard. or yeah, they heard from a buddy, oh, yeah, this is the way to go. And, you know, they, they might still have to tow with the truck or, you know, maybe it's a work truck. They need it uh, to be reliable. And uh, they don't, they're, they're not, they're buying the turbocharger based on what they hear. But, you know, there's a lot of factors that go into what turbo you should go with. So if you tow a lot with it, you want to stick to a smaller turbocharger that's going to spool fast and keep your EGTs down and match up with those stock or uh, mild injectors uh, versus you know going too big and not actually getting the benefits out of that big turbo and sacrificing drivability and stuff down low. Um, we see guys will buy a 68 mil and run stock injectors, and they'll just ask their tuner to push the tune to the max Stretch and pulse. and the, the problem is when you have that fat pulse with um you know you're spraying fuel outside of the piston bowl it creates more egts uh, more drive pressure and uh you know, in combination maybe with a tighter vein position in the tune it just depends what the tuner does uh that that big turbocharger can uh, fail just because it's you know tuned wrong it doesn't have those support supporting uh, fuel mods to really keep that uh, turbo in its efficiency range. So, yeah, right on our website, you know, we list out, you know, if this is a 64 mil, this is the size of injectors that we recommend for it. Uh, same with the 68 and above. Uh, that way the customer is buying the right turbo for their truck. Do you say the 68 millimeter and, and the 72 are really where the, the truck owner has to really pay attention to the details more so than you know say the smaller ones with the tuning the fueling i mean maybe even converter stall depending what kind of power range they're shooting for yeah with without a doubt the the, the 68 and the 72 most of the customers calling in need to be educated on what they're buying um and honestly i 90 percent of the guys that call in wanting it should be talked out of it or talked into something that's going to be a better fit for their needs. Um, and that's where we're, we're really trying to stretch that educating the customer on what is going to benefit them the most. Um, in the end, it is their decision. It's their choice. But um, again, having that knowledge behind it versus jumping into something, buying something, that's what they heard of. That's what they wanted. It, it, it just leads you down to the road of extra warranty claims, complaints, drivability issues. You're, you're, you're sacrificing other stuff that you didn't necessarily have to because you jumped into a product that you realistically didn't need, but you wanted. Or you get into buying multiple sets of the, the same part because you weren't happy the first time, which I have admittedly done before. Yeah, you have that awkward and, conversation of now you got to spend four or $5,000 on the proper set of ejectors, and with that comes a whole under underlying list of other stuff you need to be able to support that stuff it just goes down a whole nother avenue i know as, as diesel diesel enthusiasts and 
how we are. We like to do things ourselves. And one of the things I wanted to touch on with, you know, drop in verse, like a whole kit is the install. And I think, you know, especially, you know, on a Duramax, say like verse five, nine or six, seven you know, space can be kind of tight. And you know, there's been a few times I've had to work on a Duramax I had, and there wasn't a lot of room. And so, you know, for me, I think, okay, what is a way that I can reach the power level I want, have the EGT control I need, have the response, but I'm not having to try to get a downpipe in. I'm not having to try to fight different things. So from an install perspective, and, you know, you guys are installing these on trucks, is how much simpler does it make to do, you know, an upgraded drop-in turbo versus, you know, 10, 15 years ago when it was like a whole kit with a bunch of piping and a bunch of things you had to do? Yeah. Yeah. Well, that, that's what we see a lot of times. A uh, guy will purchase a turbocharger because that's all he wants to replace. Uh, maybe he's already got a downpipe and air intake, Y bridge kit. Uh, so instead of buying a S300, S400, where you got to change out everything all over again, you can just replace the turbocharger and that the parts that he already has will complement that turbo. Uh, versus also, you know, if uh, maybe he doesn't have that stuff. I mean, it just wants to keep the overall cost of this uh, swap low, just replace the turbo. Um, yeah, that's a good point. You're, you're talking replacing literally just the turbo versus you needing everything else to complement it um, while also leaving the options to do higher flowing piping kits later on. Um, while at the same time with the way the industry is going to, a drop-in is going to go in a truck with everything emissions intact. You're not doing that with an S300, S400 platform. Um the drop-ins have come a long way as well as with drivability, which is sometimes a sacrifice with going to the other platform. Um, guys that are towing or keeping their exhaust brake versus sacrificing that or giving that up. It's little things like that that they have to know and take into consideration when making their decision as well as cost and install time and all of that. That's one of the really cool things with the technology and, and the expertise of of the drop in turbos, like, you know, a long time ago it was always like, well, yeah, the stock, the stock variable, you know, charger, it responds quickly, but it's quickly, you know, kind of out of its efficiency range with not a lot. And I've got to lose my exhaust brake and then I'm going to figure out how to get it on. And should I wait till I'm doing, you know, a transmission upgrade so that the downpipe's not that much of an issue. And it's not like that anymore. There's so many choices and and you had mentioned, you know, with, with emissions components and just being able to swap just that turbo and not have to deal with a whole bunch of other things. I think that's really what today's truck owner is looking for is the most potential without having to get really complex with it. Not having to, you know, spend two full days in their garage trying to get this, this kit on it. I think that's really, really important and it's changed the way the I, I think how the industry talks about drop-in turbos and also what the truck owners want they're they're vastly more popular now and the capability is higher than, than you know it's ever been with uh with the piping kit you guys had mentioned that and i i follow you guys on instagram and i encourage our listeners to follow dan's diesel performance on there you guys have some great video and pictures and i love seeing all the different color combinations that you guys offer for for turbo covers but with the piping kit you know is it something if you have a bone well let's not say bone stock but stock turbo stock fuel maybe a tune is what kind of benefit do you get out of you know upgraded piping or is it something you really should do when you're looking at an upgraded charger with more airflow well, the uh, diesel, all it is is a big air pump, basically. And the, the better we can get air into the turbocharger and out of the turbo through the intercooler system, the overall better it's going to perform. So that's one of the biggest things you'll hear even, even Gail Banks talk about was, was all that stuff guys don't really pay attention to, and it's huge. The, the, the more, I guess I say, the easier it is working and feeding itself air, the more efficiency or the more efficient excuse me, everything's going to go from there. Um, if it's being choked down by a bunch of piping or restrictive um, components just to be fed into a larger turbo, you're kind of defeating the whole purpose of replacing that turbo that you just did. Yep. St- uh, the stock intake, stock intercore piping, white bridge, all that stuff, it works great for stock horsepower, maybe a little bit higher. But once you start pushing 
you know, past that 500 horsepower mark, uh, those components do start to hold you back, especially in the upper RPM range. And one of our biggest examples we probably use is we have a factory LML bridge cut in half. Every customer that comes in inquiring about a system like that or for that truck, it, as soon as they see the difference in the two, that, that, vis, that visual makes the decision for them. Well, it's like that, that engine stand. I remember you guys had a UCC, and it was so cool. I, I wasn't there, but I saw it on video, and I'm like, man, I can actually see. I can see all the products that you guys have. The, the, the color that you guys had was awesome. And it, you're right. It, being able to see it helps so much because, you know, when it's on a truck or it's buried underneath wiring or piping, we don't really – it's hard to identify with it. But when you start to see some of the restrictions and some of the improvements that you can make with, with piping or other, other parts, it, it kind of makes more sense, especially, you know, if someone – they're not – they're not an engineer. They haven't worked on diesel trucks for a long time. Maybe they haven't even been following the industry very long, but we can, we can see the potential and see the upgrades just right there. So uh, I'm sure that that helps a ton being able to see you know, the Y bridge and then you know, also the other products you guys have on display. Yeah. That, that setup was specifically built for exactly what you just said um, to visually be able to show the customer outside of the truck. Um, in, in this kind of industry, we, we see both. We have the guys that work on these things day in and day out. And then we also have the end user customers online reading stuff, but doesn't really know what he's reading or learning about. And being able to physically show them it without the truck around it, the stuff you can't really see that's tucked down. It's on the bottom of the intercooler. Um, all the piping that's buried underneath it, what the actual Wirebridge is doing and where it's flowing and all that stuff. It, it's an eye opener and, and a game changer. Um, and that thing has been great. Every show we bring it to, everyone is talking about it, looking at it. It's, and we're able to use it as an educational device while at the same time it is a uh, attention grabber every time it starts up. <laughs> now, I, I know you guys aren't leaving, you know, the drop in turbos to so just the Duramax guys. And, and I wanted to ask you about the power strokes and, and the Cummins platform is what do you guys offer for those? Or are you looking to offer in the future? We do offer a drop ins for the six liter power stroke and the 6.7 power stroke, uh, we just started releasing those in a 66 millimeter and a 64 millimeter size. Same thing, uh, it's just a, a drop in. Uh, it's a 15 and up style, so it's the better GT37 version versus the uh, old GT32. Pedestals so, changed up too, right? It's a 17 up style. Yeah, so it's the, the 15 and up style turbo comes with the pedestal. Uh, if you have an 11 through 14 truck, you will need the retro kit, uh, which we do offer those as well. Um, and we also are starting to work on some 7.3 stuff too for the Ford guys. And for the guys that are looking for that stuff, it, if you're not seeing it on our website, be sure to call in the shop. Just because it's on the site doesn't mean we offer it. If you have any questions, ask one of our sales guys. Um, it, as time's kind of going on, we're adding stuff, adjusting stuff, cleaning stuff up on that website. So just because you don't see it doesn't mean that we're not offering it. One of the things that always it's always interested me about diesel performance is before the product releases and the testing and and just kind of brainstorming is this size going to work or that we're going to make a change to this. So when you guys are looking at you know say that let's take the six seven power stroke and if we step back and and you're looking at, okay, we want to be able to offer these owners more capability. What kind of testing procedures do you guys go through when looking at, at different sizes and just the drivability? What, what all goes into that? Well, the nice thing about the uh, 15 and up style, it's, it's a GT37 style. So it's the same internals for the most part as the LOI through LML Duramax. So we've got a lot of history with uh, improvements on those. So we were able to take those same uh, parts and uh, theories over to the power stroke platform and get very similar results. Uh, so with turbine size and compressor size, uh, the way the truck drives, the way it responds on the dyno, uh, very similar to the Duramax side. I mean, testing is playing a huge part in these uh a lot of this different stuff we can put together and make function, but until it's actually on the road being tested, um, that we've learned so much from it. Having the dyno at our um, expense, 
uh, having Dan being able to do some calibrating, uh, getting the true data on it, um, having customers run stuff, our employees running stuff, whichever it is, uh, putting them through any real world setting. Uh, that's what we're trying to do. That's what we want to do. We don't want to just put something together in the fab shop and send it out the door and hope it works. Uh, we want to know when a guy's towing with it, it's going to respond great. His temps are in fact going to be lower. Um, it's not going to be laggy. It's not going to be a pooch. It is going to be an improvement over his factory charger. Um, pretty much lay it all out there to justify why he should be getting this versus replacing it with a stock winner or versus replacing it with a, compo- or a competitor, something of that nature. And by doing that stuff and having the knowledge behind it and bringing everything we've learned from other generations into it, um, backs our product. There's a reason we put the lifetime warranty on the new units is we, we don't have any doubt in the unit. We have the confidence in it. Realize if it's maintained like it should and doing what it should, there, there's no reason why that unit should have any failures or you know, come back to us. The real world side of it is what I think is so important because, you know, we can, you know, as a truck owner, I can read something on a you know, in a, on print or online and I can see a dyno number, but there's so much you learn about driving it, whether it's just taking off from a stoplight or passing on the, the highway or you get a trailer behind you. And that's, that's where we spend most of our time. You know, it's, it's not, even though we'd all like to spend most of our time at the racetrack at full throttle, we're, we're just not. So that real world experience. And I think, you know, looking back, a lot of recommendations for products it it can come from a friend or somebody we know and they say, Hey, I had this turbo on my truck. It, I didn't have enough fuel for it. So I went with this one. It's a great setup. And they'll talk to you about, you know, how it tows or how it daily drives. And then, you know, it, it, I'm looking at that turbo now I'm, I'm, I'm pricing them out. And I think in you know, that real world testing and what you guys are able to tell people and, and show them it, it makes it so much easier to access. So if I call you guys up and I say, Hey, this is the truck I have. This is what's done to it. This is how I use it. I'm sure whoever I talk to can tell me, hey, I know exactly what it's like to be, you know, on the interstate and passing someone and how quickly that turbo responds as, as I go around slower traffic or, you know, I'm taking off from a stop. This is what it's like. With um, with the Duramax, we've got the, the Power Stroke. I know Cummins Nation out there is going to be like, all right, well, what is Dan's diesel working on? <laughs> what are they working on for my 5.9? Or my six seven. Uh, what are you guys cooking up for them? Yeah, we're, we've been working on some drop ins for the five nines. Uh, we've got one sixty four millimeter out there right now in testing, and so far the guy loves it. Spools very quickly, sounds good. Uh, one of these days we got to get on the dyno. It, it is paired with one hundred percent overs and a twelve mil pump, so it'd be very interesting to see what that thing is capable of. And then we also have a sixty seven millimeter version as well, and. Uh, I think it should be pretty rowdy. Yeah, it's going to be an animal. So that's going to be for the uh, the five nine common rails, and then we're probably going to work on the six seven uh, drop ins as well. Uh, we're just waiting for a few more components for those, and we can uh, finalize that and get some out in testing. And I'm probably going to go backwards and do some twenty four valve and twelve valve stuff as well. So. Uh, I've got uh, all the programs written for the CNC machines, so it's all about just uh, making fixtures and you know machining and putting things together and trying it. What's so cool is to see how much like of this technology that we're chatting about with you know newer trucks. There's so many older ones that are on the road, and you know I'm sure the things you guys are learning on six sevens and five nines and Duramaxes and just all the turbos that you work on. You're able to bring that to a 98 and a half to 0 02 24 valve, or like you'd mentioned the seven threes earlier. And so those guys aren't left out either with the technology advancement and the testing and and the you know lifetime warranty and all the things we've touched on. Right. Yeah. All all the data behind it just as important as the newer ones. With uh, with the six seven, you know when when somebody calls in and they say, hey, I've got a six seven Cummins. And, you know, this is the, the power level that I'm looking for. Are they, you know, are, well, I guess the question I'm asking is like, if you take the newer trucks, are all the guys calling in wanting to be about the same power level, using them the same way? Or is there a difference between, you know, the three and kind of what they want? So from a turbocharger perspective, 
are you able to take, you know, kind of the guidelines and the power ranges and the uses for a Duramax and say, okay, the, the power stroke owners are going to want this too. And the six, seven coming guys are, are going to want this as well. Or does it vary between all three brands? The uh, power ranges between Duramax and Ford and uh, Cummins, it, it does vary. It seems like the Cummins do make more horsepower with a smaller turbocharger. I just, they seem to run better uh, with the same amount of air. I think we but, try and use the same guidelines, though, similar. We, we have those guys that are pretty much stock, maybe a few modifications. You have the guys with maybe a little bit more done to it, maybe a small set of injectors, lift pump, maybe the training's done up. And then you have the guys that are big fuel, big air, transit supported, everything. So it, from there, then we can kind of pick and choose where we want to f- focus on and what sizing and and kind of go from there. And then on top of that, then what they're going to be doing with it. If, if he wants to be able to make a ton of power with it, it's plus to hook the trailer to it and all that. Or if the guy, all he cares about is horsepower numbers, then we kind of know, okay, we can go big with this and sacrifice a little bit of drivability or practicality, you know, something of that nature. So uh, more, more cases than less though, you got to find the happy medium for the customer. They, a lot of the guys want, want it all. We, we laugh about it all the time that they, they want all the power they can get, but also be able to drive it normal without sacrificing, you know, I can't, hook a trailer to this thing or I can't take this thing in town or high EGTs, all, all, all the stuff kind of come up. You guys got me thinking about power there when you're chatting about <laughs> the guys that call in and, and want it all. And I wanted to kind of, you know, switch it now to like the install shop and, and the building that you guys have there. And, you know, ask you when somebody goes in, what, what all do you guys offer? If I was to take my truck there, you know, what could I have you guys do? Let's say, let's say I got an LBZ. And you know, I just show up, it's bone stock, and I say, hey, guys, I want, you know, 700 horsepower. Um, you know, what kind, of, what kind of program would you guys put together for me to be able to get there? Well, to get to 700 horsepower, you know, first we would tackle the basics and do the intake, the intercooler piping, uh, downpipe exhaust, all that stuff. Uh, probably do a lift pump, built trans. And then it's going to be looking into the... Uh, turbo and fuel system uh, they kind of go hand in hand you, you need fuel and air to make horsepower so we'd go with probably some 60 over injectors with a 10 mil cp3 and then a 66 mil drop in and uh, that'll put them right in that 700 to 725 horsepower range what I think is so cool is I could go to one place and just drop my truck off and then come and pick it up and all that stuff is, is done. I don't have to go from place to place to place and, and the convenience is so nice. That, that's one thing we've probably battled some of the time is people just automatically associate a performance in the name with the trucks coming here only leaving as a pull truck or performance or going on the drag strip. That's not the case. Um, majority of what goes through the shop is maintenance, repair, while also having the guys that are doing other upgrades while it's here. We do plenty of other normal wear and tear components, your pads, rotors, front end parts. If it's a GM, it probably needs something in the front end no matter what it is when it comes in. Um, So we're doing a ton of that stuff too, um, while also maintaining anything regularly, maintenance, oil changes. We'll do some, we have a hot flush machine, so any transmission we do obviously is getting a trans flush, um, or we can just do a normal trans service and utilize that machine to its benefits. all, all, all of that stuff, and sometimes guys just pass by not thinking that because they are automatically associating it with we're trying to make a thousand horsepower, and that's not the case. That's that. That was you know what I've noticed following you guys on social media for a long time is there's so much more that you guys do, and I think you know you guys build a stellar name and reputation out there, and I I think. I think of that that engine like we talked about at the uh, at UCC, or I think about you know some of the the drag racing or some of the other things. But there's the vast majority of it is is probably the smaller stuff, probably you know the maintenance or you know a, a transmission fail, fails and someone says, hey, I just need to get it back on the road. I want something a little bit more capable. Can you build this for me? And I think that's really important for people to know, especially you know where you guys are located here, like in in diesel alley you know you guys are right there in in the middle of it and there's so many trucks and so many enthusiasts and whenever i've gone you know to that area it's like i'm in diesel heaven because there's so many and they're it's all brands it's all styles it's all everything and and i think that's really cool that you guys do do it all you know if i stop by no matter what i need i get taken care of 
Yeah, and I think that helps us a lot. I, there's so many companies that popped up that are just parts pushers. Being able to actually be able to produce a part, install a part, know what it's doing, that helps set us aside from anyone else out there or any other competitors or guys that aren't doing that. Um, and it comes back to having that knowledge behind the part and what it's doing and all that stuff. Someone come up to us if they need a transmission. Uh, most time, anything transmission related, people think the worst. Vehicle's going to be down for a while, something of that nature. I get a lot of laughs or a lot of, are you sure? If someone calls in, needs a transmission, that you're coming from out of state, and I tell them we can get the truck in and out in the same day. Um, or we have units ready to go. It could be a quick turnaround. Or if they want to remove their unit, come up here, pick it up, and you know drive home. Uh, having that flexibility, that the, the availability, I should say, that where we can do that with our own parts is huge. Yeah, because most of the time it's, you know, call it ahead two or three weeks and waiting. waiting your truck's down yeah. or you're not making money. A lot of our customers are relying on that vehicle to bring in their paycheck and downtime is costing them dollars. So whatever we can do to eliminate that or keep that uh, downtime to a minimum, that's that's what our goal is. You know, a lot of the, the podcast, especially over the last year, you know, we've been talking a lot about events and people, you know, wanting to go to them to you know, meet up with friends or if people are in the industry seeing, you know, their the people that they work with from, you know, across the country or continent and everything. And I wanted to ask you guys, you know, for, for anyone that wants to meet up with you guys at a show or racetrack, talk to you about, you know, drop in turbos or anything like that. Where are you guys going to, where are you guys going to be at this year? Yeah, we'll be at uh, UCC this year. I will be at the, the Toa truck meet and Shide diesel extravaganza uh, those are the three that we have on our schedule so far. So we'll have our big booth there at all those events. So uh, stop on in and see what kind of cool things we have on display. Yeah, we should have some uh, different things this year to see some from some of the past. Um, obviously, with this past year with COVID, things were a little goofy. We were hoping to you know, be able to go to a few more events than we were able to. But uh, this year, we're excited. I mean, it, it, we like seeing our customers. We like meeting up with other dealers. We like seeing all the friendly faces that we don't normally get to see or that we didn't get to see this past year, um, while also kind of bringing some surprise stuff to the table and showing people that they may not be expecting. So you know, definitely be sure to come by, stop by, see us. Um, those three events are definitely probably our, our biggest ones, but I, I think we are also planning on being out a little bit more on the track or going down the drag strip, some of that stuff that we've kind of been uh, shying away from just from how busy we've been. Um so I think showing up there is going to be a little to, uh, a little bit of a surprise to some people. Yeah, it's just like returning to, to normalcy and it's kind of getting back to the roots. And, you know, every I think everyone I've chatted with on the podcast the last year has just been so busy and, and time's been, you know, a premium for everyone with just the amount of business, the amount of things that are going on. And it's just so fun to, you know, be able to go to an event go to the booths, be able to check out, you know, the parts and the companies. And you know, one of my, one of my favorite, you know, events that I went to, well, I went to, to Shy Diesel Extravaganza twice and I had never seen anything like that with the amount of people, the trucks and, you know, it, it was my first real exposure to an event and I'm, you know, walking through vendor row and I'm seeing Shy Diesel and XDP and there's TS Performance and Dennis Perry and just all these different companies that were there. It was just, it was, it was something that I missed. And, and I know that we're all looking forward to getting back to. Yeah. I think we're, we're super excited. I was getting excited when we signed up for Daytona here not too long ago. So it's, it's stuff we're definitely looking forward to and uh, hopefully uh, everything with COVID cooperates. We talked uh, about a lot on the podcast and, and usually after the, the, you know, the episode releases, there's very specific questions someone may have about their truck. What's the best way for anyone listening that has, you know, a question about something we, we touched on or maybe we didn't touch on it and they want to ask you guys, is it through you know, phone or email or sending you guys a message on Instagram or Facebook? Yeah, the best thing to do is give us a call. Uh, our number is 815-977-5865. Talk to any one of our guys here. We'd be happy to help you out. We're open Monday through Friday, 8 to 5 Central Time. We also are on Facebook and Instagram, so feel free to send us a message on there or an email to info at com, and we'll get back to you. 
Now, before we wrap up the podcast, I got to ask a teaser question. And at these events, are you guys going to have another one of those engines, the engine displays where you can start it up and, and see all the parts? Or are we going to have to wait and see? You'll have to be there to see. <laughs> well, I, I definitely look forward to seeing you guys out there this year. And, you know, you guys do a fantastic job with social media. So even sitting a thousand miles away in the middle of winter, I can still see all the cool things that you guys are working on. And I appreciate your time today and dropping some drop in turbo knowledge on us and look forward to seeing what you guys have planned for the rest of the year. Hey, yeah, thank you. Yeah. Thanks for having us. Don't forget diesel fans. If there's any questions you have about what we talked about on the podcast today, make sure and reach out to Dan's diesel performance. You can find them on Instagram, Facebook, uh, YouTube. You can do a Google search. It'll pull up their website. They've got a, uh, a bunch of information on the products that we talked about today, but then also a ton of other things that they do. And if you're local to them, you can also take your truck in, have them work on it and do maintenance upgrades, anything you're looking to have done until next time, keep the shiny side up.